Nearly 40 years ago, during an eight-day stretch, America came to a standstill to watch the miniseries Roots. The groundbreaking show gave a searing account of slavery focusing on its protagonist, Kunta Kinte. Now, four decades later, the modern remake has just debuted. You must hear your name first. You are Kunta Kinte, son of Omor and Binta Kinte. Based on the 1976 Pulitzer Prize-winning book by Alex Haley, the new series once again spans more than 100 years. Run! From the abduction of a young Kunta Kinte in Africa to his grandson, Chicken George, finally securing freedom in America. Just one. Thank you. The modern remake is an all-star cast featuring Lawrence Fishburne, Forrest Whitaker, Anna Paquin, and rapper T.I. Malachi Kirby plays Kunta Kinte in the reboot. The actor says taking on the role made him explore his own ancestry. It's been incredible, it's been inspiring. It's actually inspired me to find out my own roots. Um, I actually did a DNA test the other day. Um, and it's just the understanding that Kunta Kinte was empowered by the knowledge of himself and where he comes from, um, that spoke volumes to me. And so I'm just doing my own digging now. More than 100 million people tuned into the finale when the original 12-part ABC miniseries came to an end in the 70s. The remake could only dream of having the same cultural impact and interest, but it still comes out at a time when race is on the agenda, from the Oscars to the television screen. With more on the Roots reboot, our arts and culture reporter Jason Manseray joins us now. Jason, just how significant was Roots on American culture? Well, when this first aired, um, no one had seen on primetime television this kind of account of uh, slavery, uh, whether that be in America or its origins in Africa, mm -hmm. especially not at primetime. So it really captivated the nation. And especially, I mean, it was rumored that at the time bars and restaurants were empty when this show came on. Um, and that's why, you know, its season finale had over 130 million viewers and to this wow. day it remains the second highest uh, ratings for a season finale ever. Well, the remake boasts a stunning lineup of actors. Tell us about them. Yeah, well, in the report there, I mentioned, you know, the very famous people like the rapper T.I., you've got right. Lawrence Fishburne, you've also got the Oscar winner Forrest Whitaker. Um, but also, there's this really interesting element to it is that a lot of the American ca characters are actually played by British actors like uh, Jonathan Rhys Myers, who's, you know, doing an American Southern accent there, um, and as well as uh, uh, Malachi Kirby, of course, who is the uh, lead Kunta Kinte, in that he's also. Uh, part British and part African as well. Right. Well, the initial, as you said, is one of the most watched shows on television. Uh, How is this remake being received so far? Yeah, this is interesting. I've looked at, you know, obviously a lot of social media and a lot of articles out there as well. And it's been, as a whole, I have to say, rather positive, especially when you've got people like, you know, Oprah Winfrey coming out and, you know, showing her support. Ava DuVernay, who directed the Martin Luther King biopic mm -hmm. um, Selma, um, has been really good. There was a tweet from an American actress called uh, Gabori Sidibe in which she said she had to block a lot of users when she posted her support. But that was maybe, you know, a, a racial backlash from, you know, a very few people. It wasn't so much a critical one. But what was interesting was uh, Snoop Dogg, formerly known as Snoop Lion, he actually posted on social media a video um, urging his fans not to um, watch the show. Now, we can have a look at his Instagram page now. We can't play the video, though, because unfortunately it has too many swear words in it. So I'm going to paraphrase. And I've got to uh, highlight that I am paraphrasing here exactly what he did say, um, because, you know, we had to leave a well, few... Well, thank you for that, yes. <laughs> yeah, a few, we had to leave a few words out there. <laughs> Um, he said, let's create our own stuff based on today, how we live and how we inspire people today. And black is what's real, not that old stuff. Um, how many inspirational black people there are in the world? And, you know, really what he's trying to say there is that perhaps, you know, like with Django Unchained, 12 Years a Slave, the most recent one, of course, is The Birth of a Nation, which all look at this particular uh, part of uh, African-American history. Why aren't we looking at some of the more sort of contemporary or at least, you know, inspirational stories um, of success? Right. 
Well, Kunta Kinte's struggle has been rendered a little bit sleek at this time. Uh, are we losing anything from the story, do you think? Yeah, you're right about saying it's a bit sleeker. I mean, originally it was sort of a 12-part series, um, and now it's down to eight, or eight hours, rather. Um, and so, you know, in that way, it's become a lot sleeker and a mo lot more condensed. Where it's done different stuff is that it's looked at things like, you know, how African-Americans were treated when they served in the Civil War. Um, they've also really uh, brought in uh, historians to... Uh, you know, do proper research, which of course has given us some really gritty, you know, probably quite traumatic uh, elements that they've added to it. But it's also right. meant that, unlike the first one, they really replicated both the plantations and the environments that it was shot in. Whereas, you know, the original was actually shot almost entirely on the Disneyland ranch. So that's really one of the main changes you'll see. Right. So visually, we're getting a bit more of a, a stronger piece here. Um, well, race has been on America's agenda from politics to the Oscars to pop music. Why now for the remake of Roots? Well, it was interesting. One of the uh, e executive producers of the program said that basically he'd shown his children the original and they'd said, you know, just like with your music, you know, from your day, it, it just doesn't speak to me. And really that's what they're trying to do here is they're trying to communicate with, I guess, the grandkids of those people who either read or watched it in the 70s. So they've really made it contemporary and, you know, use it as an opportunity to give a whole new generation this you know, experience um, that many people went through and was hugely popular, of course, in the 1970s when it first aired right. on ABC. But now it's moved over to history um, and certainly sleeker and definitely relevant to a new audience. Definitely. Telling the story once more. Thank you very much, Jason Mansory.